Um, a couple quick notes. This year we had 240 total responses, 150 which qualified. We did just a very basic cleaning of the data. Um, stuff that was clearly wrong or where there were very few answers, somebody that you know, started the survey and left. We're happy it's, it's about 50% more than qualified last year. We'd like to continue growing the number, but I think overall this is good enough for a lot of it. But that said, obviously the data is not perfect. Um, you'll see there's, there's insufficient data for some segmentation. The more we break it down, the more we get into smaller and smaller group sizes. And we instead decided that five was sort of the limit with which we felt comfortable. Under five people, it becomes a little bit too much like, that's how much this guy makes. So we decided not to show anything uh, that low. And then I'll do my best. Um, for, the, for the infographic that we'll put out, it'll be much more clean. For this one, I thought it could be interesting to show you guys some of the places where we're a little less sure, because if you can't talk about flaws in research methodology to a group full of researchers, who the hell can you tell? <laughs> so I'll do my best to point them out. Um, and that's the only thing I'm gonna point out, otherwise we're gonna go real quick. Also, sorry Ben, I stuck with averages. Uh, Tell somebody to Excel to make power pivot do medians. Okay, so first I'm gonna start by going through location and here's sort of just a breakdown of count. Um, so you can see that we have in both California and Canada the highest amount of respondents at 30 each. And then it gets kind of small in other areas, specifically like rest of Europe, we have to mash them all together in order to make a number that makes sense. And unfortunately I can't talk about Asia at all because there were fewer than five in it. Um, Asia and Australasia, and for the rest, uh, representative enough to, to, to make some calls, but there's some stuff I can't break down. Uh, this is the money shot. This is the one you guys probably all want to take pictures of, so I'll pause for a second. All right, so what we had to do here to be able to keep it so that uh, I was comfortable with showing the numbers was we combined, in the questionnaire we asked entry level, mid-level, like, or entry and, or associate, mid-level and staff, senior slash principal, and exec slash management. We combined the first two and the back two, uh, it gives you, and you can see, I don't know if the colors are clear, but the top one is entry and mid, and the bottom number is senior and exec. And so, uh, with this you get a good sense of what's happening. It is worth pointing out in this slide, for the UK figures, some of them seemed to not line up with what we expected, and we think there may have been a problem with people from the UK not using the currency converter before punching in their salaries. So we are afraid that those are artificially lowered, um, because people put it in pounds instead of US dollars. Uh, because even researchers don't read full survey questions. <laughs> um, under education, the way it breaks down, broadly speaking, is that I shouldn't use such light colors and slides. Um, this is what it looks like. There's a lot of masters. Uh, the reason we put a star next to college, I just want to point out, is the definition, it turns out, for college is very different in the UK than it is in North America. And so there is some variance in that one that uh, is our fault. Uh, degree by salary, again, so the same thing for college. So those of you, everybody in the junior mentor question, uh, group that asked me if it's worth getting a PhD, if you're okay with deferring your earnings, you'll, you'll do all right when you get out of that. Um, that's about all. Under field breakdown, so this room should be about one out of three people in, uh, graduated in, neuropsychology or in neuroscience or psychology, and there's some representation in other fields, and then how that breaks down in terms of salary, uh, looks like this. There's two interesting thoughts here. Um, game design and game production, our best guess at why that's so low is that these people come to games you are as a stepping stone into other industries and never graduate into more senior roles, so their salaries tend to be a little bit lower. And it's a similar guess that we made about um, user experience. The degrees that you can get in those fields are, uh, they're still, you know, they're, they're relatively new, the availability of those fields. So those people, despite the fact that you would think People with a degree in the field that they work in should be the highest, but yeah. in this case we think it's because they tend to be a little bit more junior and we should see that grow throughout the years. Uh, seniority is next. So um, this reflects something I'm hoping every year to try to get more entry level juniors and associates to answer the survey, but I think you know for the most part this um, breakdown appears representative overall and then not really any surprises here hopefully. That's sort of what it looks like. Uh, so keep at it, we'll get those bucks. Uh, in terms of tasks, the way we had it is that everybody could choose their three main tasks. So there, is, there are more answers here than there are people. Uh, you can see that for the most part, uh, people, most people, at least in some respect, do some form of study design or analysis. Um, the one that I thought was interesting to mention, oh, on the salary slide, 
Uh, research lab and facility management tends to be a little bit lower. I think that when we asked this question, we meant more like running the lab, whereas we think that it, the, the low number is explained by the fact that uh, people that do more like maintenance and cleanup and technology upkeep uh, gave that answer, which is sort of um, what, what pushed that there. Um, we were also pretty surprised to see study execution low, but I guess um, that also includes like moderation and some of those tasks that are a little bit more junior in nature. Uh, in terms of organization, so you see here academia and freelance uh, and independent research studio tend to be quite small. The majority of the room uh, should be probably either in a development studio or a publisher. Um, and this is how those costs break down. Unfortunately, academia and freelance both were under five people, so I'm not, I don't know how much you make in academia. Um, the other thing is independent research studio is, is highly represented by those UK ones, so we're we do have a worry that that looks a little lower than it might be because of the salary conversion. Uh, gender, so uh, we're about a, th a third women, two thirds men. Um, the nice thing about this is that the IGDA stat from 2017 is 21%, so we are overall better than industry, which I think is promising. <laughs> uh, this next one's a little bit of good and bad, so just get ready for it. Uh, essentially, the data that I have tends to show that there doesn't appear to be a pay disparity between men and women within the same roles, which is the good news. The bad news is uh, that we, we're not necessarily doing a good enough job at keeping women in long enough or promoting them into more senior and executive roles. The, the difference there is very twisted. And so hopefully that's something that throughout the years we'll be able to work on and, and, and get that better. But I mean, the, the top part's pretty different. Uh, here's some interesting little pieces that I thought were worth sharing that aren't necessarily directly related to salary. The first is work-life balance. So two-thirds of people have what I think is a pretty reasonable work schedule of between 40 and 45 hours. Uh, and I don't know which way the causation works here, but one way to see it is if you're willing to put in a ton of hours, man, you'll get paid. The other way to see that is if you want to get paid, you got to work your ass off. Either way, it's a good story. <laughs> this, early, like, this one, I, um, Seth won't ever let me put in joke questions into the salary survey because it's unprofessional. <laughs> but he let me get away with this one, which is how much leisure time do you play? Uh, and I was very happy to see that we are uh, a group that participates in our own creative culture, more so than I would guess the average is like. Uh, even up through senior, um, it's extraordinarily rare for anybody to not play games, which I I'm very happy about. Um, maybe next year I can sneak in the question about who makes more money, people who like Ocarina of Time or a Link to the Past, but <laughs> talk to Seth. Uh, and then this one, um, I'm happy about this. Nine out of ten people are happy about their job in games user research, so we're a room full of people who are pretty stoked to be doing what we're doing. Um, but the only other results I could find for industry were from a random article I found on Gamma Sutra in 2013, which is 7 out of 10 dev, so we're better than the average. There is an IGDA satisfaction survey that goes out every year, and conspicuously the only question I couldn't find an answer to was job satisfaction. <laughs> uh, eventually I'm hoping to be able to fill this slide out with year-on-year -year information. Right now it's uh, a little less interesting than it could be. <laughs> Last year the average was 74, the average is still 74. So. <laughs> But uh, as we keep going, and hopefully we can build this out and start to build a more robust data set, and then in future years, hoping to show trends in terms of the evolution, some of the stuff I talked about, gender disparity and, and pay and senior versus junior uh, ratios and stuff like that. Hopefully, um, if you guys let us continue to keep doing this, we'll be able to show you some more interesting trends in the way that we work. Um, yeah, like I said, closing thoughts. Thank you for trusting us. I mean, it's uh, we, me and Seb don't take this very lightly that you guys allow us to um, collect this information, we know how sensitive it is, and, but you know, hopefully what we're able to output, you guys find it interesting and valuable, and we will continue to do it, and we have a pretty robust post-mortem process, um, but the more information you can send us afterwards to tell us what you liked about this, what you want to see in future years, the more we're going to roll that in into the process, the more we can improve it and continue to make this better. Uh, I do want to just one really technical note, um, we're happy to continue to show parts of the data set if you have very specific questions, but we want that this year to happen in the open. And I probably should have asked you about the Discord earlier, but I didn't. But I want a Discord channel for us 
because we want the query process and the answer process to be public. So if you want to ask me about something in the data set, that's cool, but everybody else gets to see what you're asking and everybody else gets to see the answer from here on out. Um, and thank you, man. You guys are the best. <laughs>